Hi, I'm Brandon. And I'm Megan. For years, we were stuck in a rut, always complaining that nothing ever changed for us. And then we realized, if we wanted to improve our lives, we had to put in the work. Each week on this podcast, we'll get into an aspect of personal growth, relationships, or just life. Through our own experiences and guest interviews, we hope to inspire you to make your own positive changes. Welcome Welcome to to the the Fools in Love Podcast. Podcast. Well, we are back. Yes, we are. And it's 2021. I know. Is this, what is this, the first or second episode of 2021? I don't even know. Meg, you've already lost track. It's the second episode of 2021. Well, look at us go. Here we go. Yep. So today we want to talk about something that I think we're all guilty of, even though none of us like to admit it. And I think if we're being honest, all of us could definitely work on this. And that is procrastination. Uh, yeah, I think I can definitely relate to that and possibly improve some of that. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we know procrastination is like really common thing, but just coming into a new year and we talked in our last episode last week about 2021 and just planning for uncertain times, but really the idea of planning and having goals and setting forth different things, like the biggest thing that can get in the way of that is distractions and procrastination, which is why we kind of wanted to speak to that today. Because I know for me, I just procrastinate. Even though I know I should be doing something, even though I know I should be doing this, that, or the other, I get caught in the scroll of social media. I get caught over on YouTube. I get caught just, you know, dealing with our kids or other things at work that are pulling me away. And this thing, this like this procrastination voice even comes in and is like, oh, you know, you're good. You can just do that later. You can just do that later. Just put it off for now. Brandon, you got this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why do today what we can put off for later, right? <laughs> but the thing is, I think it's so interesting because there are so many different motivations for why we procrastinate. Like not everybody has the same reason. And there's even a couple reasons that are actually kind of decent for procrastinating. So Let's dive in. Yeah, I love that because uh, real quick, just you talking about the fact that there's like justifiable reasons because that's like the biggest guilty pleasure, right? You're like, oh, well, you know, I'm just, you know, taking care of the kids and I'm taking them this activity and that. So, I mean, I can, it's, it's okay. And then we always talk about on here and me and Meg talk about personally, but it's like, it's those, it's those things and those like times where the world, like no one would actually judge you. For not doing it in that moment. Like you've been having a bad day, this, that, and the other, fill in the blank of what it is. But man, there are so many. And so I I can't wait to get into these. (laughs) Okay. So one of the reasons, one of the major reasons I should say that I tend to procrastinate is when I don't know how. So every single time I'm trying something new or it's something that I found hard in the past, that's a trigger for me to procrastinate. I'm like, well, I don't know how to do it. So I might as well just never, ever, ever do it. Like I should just put this off until forever. And hopefully the Lord calls me home or I die before (laughs) this goes on because there is just no way for me to do this. And I go down this really ridiculous like train of thought just because I don't know how. And it ends up really kind of hindering me because I'm not doing it, but also I'm thinking of, you know, all the reasons why I can't, which is also kind of hurting my confidence in the meantime. So not am I not only am I just procrastinating, I'm also like bullying myself in the in the process. Yeah, I'm really guilty of that too because it's it's that inner voice. So it's that when I don't know how to do something, it's like, well, you're not worthy of it, you're you're stupid, you know, what makes you think you can do that? That's what comes in my mind every time when I try to do something. And then you just revert back to your old habits and old ways. And like we said, coming into this new year, that's exactly what we're all doing. We're all motivated on January 1st to get out there and get our goals and do things. But then what happens when we start to trip or stumble? Well, you know, we usually revert back if we're being honest. We don't, and we use that excuse of like, well, I don't know. But my argument for that is, but how are you going to find out? Like if you don't know now, that's great. There's plenty of things we don't know. And we're going to be exploring so many new things this year that I'm excited about that we have no idea how to do. But the thing is, the way we look at it is all 
all worked into that. Because if I look at it in a way like, I don't know how, but I'm willing to do the work to figure out how, it's like an if, but, you know, if then statement again, like you, you are willing to put in the work to figure it out. And again, I'd argue there's no way you can figure it out until you try it and potentially fail. Yeah. And as you were talking, I kind of were I kind of was thinking too, like, and not just maybe that I don't know how, but also like if I don't think that I can come up with an idea, like even if I'm trying to think of the next podcast episode or whatever, I'll procrastinate on typing out some early thoughts on an episode just because I'm like, oh, I have nothing to say. Like, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm not creative enough. Like, it's not even that I don't know how, because clearly I know how to come on the podcast and talk about things. It's just like, I think it might be a little bit too difficult and my brain doesn't want to do it. So there you go. I can't. Right. It's like, it's like not only that I don't know how, it's like, I don't know what. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know how to do it. But like, even if it's like, no, I know how to do it. I just don't know what to do because I could do it this way, this way, this way, or this way. Or maybe I could take this angle or that angle, not even just podcast. I mean, anything. Like, we've talked about doing our course. We've talked about different things that we have coming up where we're like, well, we could do this, or maybe you could try to do something, or maybe I could try to do something, or maybe we could do it together, or maybe we could bring these people in to do it with it. And it's like, and you get caught up in the minutia of like all the different things that you could be doing, and it cripples you to doing just the one thing or anything in the direction that you need to go. Right. There's so many choices that you just do nothing instead and you procrastinate. I totally get that. Love that you brought that up. Okay. So another thing that I'm totally guilty of is... I procrastinate when I think I might fail. And listen, I know that this sounds a lot like I don't know how, but it's more than that because it's when I'm not 100% sure that it'll work or that it'll be correct. If I could maybe get it wrong, then I don't want to go ahead and do it. So I'm just going to sit back and pretend I don't have to do it. Right. And that just falls right into that path of that self-fulfilling prophecy. You're like, you've already determined, and we all are guilty of this, y'all. All of us. I know I am. But we... we prophesize and think like, oh, we already know what's going to happen in this situation. Like if I do this, then this, and we're really big planners about thinking about what's going to happen. And we've talked about often going to the worst case scenario, but that's, that's true because when you start to think about it, you're like, well, this is what's going to happen. If I do this, then what if blah, 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 or this will happen, even though you've never done it, you've never tried it. Or maybe you tried it in the past and it didn't go that way. So that's going to repeat itself again in your mind. And these are the triggers and things and thoughts that can come through our head that can really incapacitate us to doing anything that we're trying to do and fall into this this cycle. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it starts so young. I've noticed even with our first grader that she just completely shuts down anytime she thinks that she might fail at anything. Like, even if it's a homework problem, even if it's a word she doesn't know yet, like if there's a word in a book that she can't read yet, she'll be like, well, I just don't want to read. Like, I just don't want to read. I'm, I'm done. Like, I don't know. I can't try. Like, she won't even try to sound out the word because she's so convinced that she's just going to fail at it. And it's like those kind of things. I mean, She's six and she's already experiencing that. And it's not like we sit around teaching her those things. It's just natural. I think it's all too like how we look at it in a world worldly view, like how we look at failure. It's all just like, what does the word failure mean to you? Because like we were just having a conversation recently where I was like, you know, we've done a few things recently that didn't go as we planned. Let's just say that mm-hmm. they did not go as we planned. They could have been perceived and past Brandon would have thought they were were a failure. But then if you reframe it and you're like, but how would we have ever known that that's not how we should have done something if we didn't do it? But it's all in how you frame the word failure. But you, like you said, our daughter even, and it's taught, it's ingrained from a really young age that like failure is not something you want to do. And even when you do fail or perceivably fail, the way the world responds, like, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. You know, it's like it's like a negative thing. But like if you reframe to be like, no, it's actually like a really positive thing because now I know the whatever, however many ways to do it. And I love it too, like, because I feel like there's some sort of almost a cultural shift going on right now, at least in the people that we follow on Instagram and the circles that we're in, in life. I just feel like there is this general consensus that we want to change that. Like I see a lot of people posting about like, you know, failures, actually growth, that kind of stuff. And it just makes my heart happy because the more we can teach people and educate people about that, I think the better we'll all feel about it. And it won't be so 
it won't be such a tendency to procrastinate and not do the things that we want to do because we won't have to be terrified of failure anymore. And, and the thing, just to add on to it real quick, the thing I've realized for me is when I feel that, that fear of failure creeping in, that means I'm close to breaking through. Because like when I keep butting up against that and I'm like, I'm getting that feeling in my stomach again, it's like that feeling you're on a roller coaster, you know, that you're like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. I know that I'm just a little bit closer to being and pushing through to the person I'm meant to be. So does that help you kind of get it done? It does. I mean, and I'll be honest, I mean, it doesn't always work, but I'm, I'm trying to improve every day and we try to be real straightforward on this podcast. Like we don't have it perfect. But one of the things I've done is I've tried to realize that like when I get that feeling, it's not something to run away from. It's something to run to. Love that. And next, I next I want to just touch on like the fact that a lot of times I don't want to do it because it's boring. Like we do a lot of really fun, exciting things, like things I enjoy doing. A lot of the creation things that we do, I enjoy doing. But a lot of like the things that we do on the back end that no one really thinks about, but like they see it's just boring. Like I don't want to do it. And and it's not like, it's not any particular thing on any particular day. It's just like, I need to learn how to do this new thing, but it's not exciting. It'll be good for our business when we do it, or it'll be good for me individually when I learn that. But man, I don't want to sit down and take the time to do that. For me, it's not even about like something that needs to be learned that's boring. It's like the things that I'm already so good at that I could do them practically sleeping and I just find them like completely mundane. That's where I'm like, yeah, I can just put this off because I'm almost like I feel like I'm such an expert at it or whatever that like, who cares? I can do it in 10 seconds later and it won't be a big deal. And that's where I struggle with putting off the boring stuff. Oh, I like that, too, because I think that's the biggest place that you can make mistakes because you're like, well, no, I already know how to do it so I can put it off or, you know, I don't really have to give much thought to this. So I'm just going to kind of mail this one in. And that's where you can make your biggest mistakes. So I love that you said that because that I, I totally resonate with that. Oh, yeah. And I'm experiencing this right now because there's some really, really quite unbearable tasks that I'm doing at work right now. And I mean, I promise you, my brain is on autopilot if I even allow it. Like somebody came to me yesterday and was like, by the way, you totally didn't even like you put in the wrong thing entirely. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, because I'm just on autopilot because it is boring. So Even though I'm aware of this challenge for me and I was doing it, I was finally dealing with the procrastination and doing it. It's still a danger that when you start doing it, you got to kind of push past that even, even if you don't want to. Right. (laughs) Well, I just think about the next one here. It just, it takes me back to my college days because it's many, and, and I know many people probably can, can agree with me here, but like when you're under pressure, you just work better. So like you procrastinate and put things off because you think that like when you're under pressure, you can you can do a better job because it needs to be done. It has to be done. And we do, we do by the way, talk about having deadlines and things like setting forth things to make sure that, that stuff's accomplished. But if we're being honest, a lot of us sit back and wait and we're like, well, we have this due at work, but it's not due for a couple of weeks. So I can just kind of lounge back. And then I just, I work better when I'm under pressure and then I can actually get it done. And I did this in college. Actually, I remember losing a 10 page term paper because I was doing it the night before and my little jump drive thingy, whatever you call that thing, crapped out and I lost the whole thing. And let me tell you, under pressure was not very great when I was working on it until 2 a.m. Right. And the funny thing is, I know there are people that really do function like this. So we're not saying that you shouldn't do this. Like if this is your jam and you want to pull all the all nighters in the whole wide world, go for it. Like that's you do you, boo. But For most of us, I think it's probably a little bit more of an excuse for procrastination, a justification for procrastination that doesn't ring true. So just a little caveat on that one that it might totally be true and it might actually work for you. I don't think that it works for me that well. I think that I kind of learned that this was a strategy for being okay with procrastination because I do not remember doing this really until high school. Like I don't think that I ever uttered the words ever that I work better under pressure until I was way older. Like I In elementary school and middle school, I know that I studied all week for the test. There was no overnight cramming. There was nothing. But as I got older, I was like, eh, I can just read every single chapter of the whole unit in the night and learn everything and be good by tomorrow. But that is certainly not how I really am. I think that was me just trying to do what everybody else did and kind of make that work for me. But it's not who I am. 
And I think a lot of that too, and it kind of goes right with that, is just the fact that you don't need to do something right now. So you're able to like put it off. And and I know like for me, there's a lot of times where like I might be I might see something or or see something around the house I need to do, see something at work that I need to do, see a task that I need to complete, but I know I don't need to do it yet. So rather than just taking the time to do it right then, I'm just like, well, I'll just do it later. But then it's like, but all those things just stack up later. And the rule of thumb is if you're already in something, if you're already thinking about it, and especially like these small things, which most of the time it is for me, just get it done and don't worry about it later and just have it done completely. Unless you're like me sometimes where I am so far ahead and I forget I even did it. And then I'm like redoing something and I'm like, oh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen you do that a time or two where I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure we already did that. But okay. But I think for me, it's more like I'm super, you know, proud of my household tasks on this one. Like me cleaning off the refrigerator shelves is a good example. I have been procrastinating on it procrastinating on that for an embarrassingly long time because I'm like, who will even know? Like who, who's going to look inside my refrigerator? Like I have so many things I could be doing. I could be playing with the kids. I could be writing a blog post. I could be doing literally anything else in the world. And my life would feel better than if I go clean out some refrigerator shelves. So like that kind of stuff is like, I will procrastinate forever. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and, and I know that's like a, just a smaller kind of silly thing, but like that is a dangerous precedent to set. Because, because when you were saying that, what came to my mind is, and I do this a lot, like I'm accountable to myself, but like I, a lot of times will be like, well, no one will really know or notice if I don't do this. I mean, why do I need to do it right now? Mm -hmm. Even though I told myself I was going to do it. What if I don't, what if I don't do it? Like, is anyone really going to know? Is anyone really going to care? But it's like, but that's not important because it doesn't really matter what other people think. It's like, what are what are you doing to show yourself that you're going to hold yourself accountable? But like, that's a dangerous precedent to set because just like, you know, the refrigerator is one thing, but like a project that you were going to work on or a goal that you had set for like this first quarter or whatever, if you put that off, then like you never do it. And then like, you've already proven to yourself that you're like not going to hold yourself accountable to do it. So then- What's it matter if it's next month or the fall? You know, like, what does that really matter? So that's like a, that's a really interesting take on that. Yeah. Who knew that refrigerator shelves could be so deep? <laughs> I know. Okay. So out of all those, all of those though, B, what do you think, which one was the most true for you? Like, which one is the most Brandon? The most Brandon, honestly, and, and I, and I was being real when I talked about it, I'll be real about it again. It's the fear of failure. Because that voice inside of me tells me that I'm not good enough, that what business do I have doing this? And if, even though I'm trying to work on it, if things don't go the way that they're supposed to go, it's like almost evidence to the fact that I shouldn't be doing it and that other people's voices or the voice that I hear in my head, he's right. He's right. I don't have any business doing this and I should just go back to doing what I used to do. And that resonates with me the most even though I've worked on that one the most, but it just shows how difficult it is to overcome, mm-hmm. even when you're aware of it. Right. How about you? I'm going to say that mine is that I don't know how. And that's because basically I feel like I just want no resistance. Like I want, and I know, I know this is not how life works. I know this is not truly deep down what I want, but like I want things to just be easy and be like attainable for me. So when I feel like they won't be, I just don't want to do it at all. Like I'm like, oh, well, if I'm not sure how to do this, if if this feels like it could take too long or be too hard, like I just don't want to have any sort of resistance. I don't want anything to be difficult. I just want easy street all day, every day. Please and thank you. And that's like where my brain goes, even though, of course, that's ridiculous because nothing ever comes easy. The best things in life you have to work really hard for. So I get all those things as I'm saying it, but I think that's just like my natural inclination is to be like, yep, I don't know how can't do it. Bye. Do you think that's because you like, you want the easy like attaboys or the easy wins or like, because why? Because like you touched on that, all the things in life where they've been the most difficult, like I've come out way stronger on the other side of. Oh, I know that. But I just like, when I think about it, like, especially like in work tasks, like if I'm thinking like more of like a professional train of thought, like I think I just really don't 
want to have to think or do it's so stupid. I know as I'm saying it, it's so stupid. I don't want to have to think too much and like struggle too much. I just want to like do it and move on and be on to the next. Right. Right. Okay. So now that we've talked about this, we've kind of gone through the main reasons for procrastination. If y'all have others, go ahead and DM us at the fools in love. We'd love to hear them, but we wanted to give you some things that you can do now, some practical steps, hopefully that will help you kind of kick this uh, procrastination to the curb. Absolutely. I think that one of the most important things is to just accept that not knowing how or accept the possibility of failure are actually real concerns and then going from there and figuring out what to do, like just facing it head on. Right. And I think about like a lot of the things we've been doing even as of, as of recently, like building this whole relationship boot camp we were working on. I mean, we had all kinds of things that we didn't know going into it, but again, how would we have ever learned if we didn't do that? And then we really knew that we couldn't, we couldn't do it without certain practices put into place. So we, we used a lot of different practical things to make sure that we were staying on task and getting through the things that we didn't know. Well, right. I mean, for, for us, we understood that we had no clue how to do many things. So like some of our post-its that we had on our scrum board were, Things like research this or watch video about how to do this because we just understood intuitively that we weren't going to do it unless we like laid the foundation first. So many of our steps were not even doing the thing, but figuring out how to do the thing and using that as like a to do actionable step towards our journey of getting this thing built. Right. And each time you move like the scrum board, you have like the things that you're you need to do the things you're currently working on the things you've done but even like the smaller post-its like when you move those you're showing yourself that like hey i didn't know how to do this but guess what it's done now and i didn't know how to do this but guess what it's done now and like you're constantly reiterating in your mind that like you did figure it out you're just retraining yourself to say no i did figure this out cool and i can do the next and the next so that is perfect the next thing going with that is just setting small achievable goals that will build confidence over time. Because just like with this boot camp we were doing, just like with all the things we've done in our life, we do small things and we a lot of times we'll get focused on the huge things that we haven't yet accomplished. I know a lot of us look at people 10 years ahead of us and do that same thing. I'm so guilty of it. But if you do small attainable goals, and I'm not saying you don't set big goals, but you get those small wins piled up and you just you you kind of puff up yourself and you feel better and you feel more confident going into everything else and to take on those bigger tasks. Right. And the more confidence you're able to build up, the less likely you'll feel that pull to procrastinate. You'll be able to just say, I, I know how to do this. I'm confident with this. Let's do this and knock this off the list. And speaking of list, I would say that the thing that most people don't do because this is the thing people procrastinate on the most, but it's to put that hard stuff, like the hardest task, the thing that you don't want to do that you think is the most difficult, put that sucker right at the top. Oh yeah. And I know that this is like definitely widely accepted and advised, but when you're doing those hard things first, you're actually doing them when you're at your best. You're doing them when you're fresh and your brain is firing on all cylinders. And the longer you put off the hard task, the more the day is going to go on, the more chances there are for things to pop up and get in your way of doing it and keep you procrastinating. When you do them first and you do them fresh, you have a way better chance of actually accomplishing it and knocking that procrastination to the curb. Right. And then how much easier are all the tasks after that? Because like you've, you've took down the biggest one. So then once you've done that, every single thing behind that is going to feel like cake compared to that thing. The only word of caution I would give there is don't make the thing so big that you can't possibly accomplish it in the time frame that you're giving yourself. Otherwise, you'll never get to the rest of your list. You know, so if you need, if you have big things and they're the difficult things, you can still chop those things up and let that be at the top of the list, but don't let that keep you from doing all the other things that you need to do as well. Right. And then what I personally do is that I do the boring stuff next. So after the hard stuff, the next thing on my list is going to be the boring stuff because that's the next place that I'm going to turn when I don't want to do something and I'm going to put it off is the boring stuff. Like I told you, I just am like, eh, this is so easy. I could do it asleep. Well, that's where I'm going to, that's where I'm going to head next. So that goes like number two and number three on my list all the time. Yeah. And we touched on this earlier, but I think 
one of the most important things is just to accept your past failures. Maybe the times where you know you've failed in the past, or maybe the times where you just procrastinate in the past, and you've recognized that, and you understand that that's not who you want to be anymore. So just accept those, state those to yourself. Yep, Brandon, you did used to do that, but guess what? We're moving on from this, buddy boy, and we're gonna get this thing done. Because just because you failed then doesn't mean you're going to fail now. And even if you fail now, it doesn't mean that you're going to fail in the future. You've actually learned. And none of us want to think that. None of us want to believe that. But I'm telling y'all, take an audit of your biggest failures right now. Maybe you could even think about your three biggest failures in life. Now that you've had however many years or amount of time to get past that, how much further along have you come because of that? I'm not saying it was fun. I'm not saying you wanted to do it, but how much further along have you come now because those things happened? Right. That mind shift set is everything when you're talking about procrastination and accomplishing your goals. Another thing that's super important is to cut out the distractions. You want to talk about procrastination? Let's talk about Facebook and Instagram and all the social. I mean, could there be a better way? Like, it's like the gods of social like came down and were like, here's how we will make you all procrastinate. Like they're designed for specifically for that purpose. Right. And social aside, we're just like, we are more distracted as a people than we ever have been in the history of the world. There are so many things to pull you away, whether it's your phone, whether it's social, whether it's TV, whether it's just your, like everyone being able to get in touch with you at any point from any different area, like email text. Yeah. There's just so many different distractions that are pulling you all types of ways. And then we wonder why we're not getting the things done that we need to get done. And a lot of us say we don't have the time, but if we just look at where we're using our time, that's the easiest, lowest hanging fruit to figure out where you can find more time because the reality is we all have the same amount of time. And I've heard it so many times in so many different ways, but like it's still, I struggle with it. So it's like, here's some practical steps. Take your social media apps off your phone if you're finding that they're distracting you. Leave your phone in the other room maybe. Like we've started doing a challenge this year uh, for January. It's no social Sundays. So if we don't use our social media on our phones on Sundays, it doesn't seem like that big a deal. But let me tell you how much I use my phone in the day. I didn't. I put it on the charge at the end of the night and it was 98% full because I didn't use my phone when I didn't have that, which tells me that that was a huge distraction. Also, and still is. is. Also, stop checking your freaking email. Like people check their email every hour on the hour, every minute on the minute. Like you should not be responding or seeing an email the minute that someone sends it to you. You should be checking your email two, maybe three times a day. And I'm guilty of this Mm. tenfold, but you do not need to be pulled and get distracted into someone else's, you know, calling for your life or what you need to do. Someone else's to-do list is being pulled into your life. If you're trying to work on something and getting serious about what you need to get done, stop checking your email. And then... Create a space for work, a space for work and a space for rest. We're all so guilty of taking our phone, our laptop, everything everywhere to figure out what we need to do. Create a space that you need to work in. Me and Megan were just talking about this recently because we find it difficult a lot of the times to get certain things done. Or we've been talking about meditating recently and we're like, how would we do that? Because we don't define a space that we can actually do it. We don't allow ourselves that. If you define a space for work and define a space for rest, you'll cut out on the distractions. And if you go into your space for work, don't take your phone with you if you're going to try to lock something in. We often wonder why, like, and I know with COVID right now, we can't really do that, but like why we worked so much better when we went to the coffee shop or why like I used to work better when I'd go to the library. It's because that space in your head is defined for work. But if you're trying to pull out your laptop in your bed and work, like that is not, that's counterintuitive. Your brain thinks that space is for sleep and rest. Then you're trying to get your brain to be like, no, no, this is for work. Like it's just, it's, it, there's too many things pulling you away. So create the space and time to be distraction free. And the other thing that we're big on is creating deadlines and sticking to them, which I know it sounds like, well, obviously we'll just procrastinate on that too, but it works. This helps you be accountable to yourself And if you're writing them down and sharing them, then it also helps you be accountable to others and you cannot procrastinate if you have deadlines to meet. Yeah. And for all you who work better under pressure, what pressure is there if there's no deadline? What pressure is there if you're just, well, I want to do something sometime in 2021. 
what's the likelihood that's going to get accomplished? Or one day I'd like to. Yes. One day I would like to do this. (laughs) Y'all, we all do it. I do it. We all do it. But it's like one day, someday, just stop. Stop saying someday. Stop saying one day. Say, you know what? This quarter, I would like to do this. This By the end of January, I'd like to have this accomplished. Setting a deadline gets it done. And I'll give you a perfect example. I was working on our website for our company and I was just like waffling because I was like, well, you know, I'm going to get it done at a certain time. Like, or not even at a certain time. I'm going to get it done. Like, I, I just, I want to do this. This is a goal of mine. But you know what happened when I said, you know what, I'm going to get it done by the end of November. The thing was up by the end of November. Actually, it was done before Thanksgiving in November because I set a timeline to say I wanted it done. And then it motivated me to actually achieve it and reach for it. But if I would have just sat there and been like, you know what, I want to be, I want to be better. Or I want to do this with no timeline at all. Like stop saying you want and plan on a way that you're going to do. Right. And the website thing, I mean, months on end, you were saying that you were going to do it eventually. And it was, I mean, months. So only when you created that deadline to yourself, did you actually even start really truly digging in, digging in and doing the work. Yeah. And then lastly, y'all, and you're going to get so sick of us saying this, but I'm going to keep saying it because I want it to hammer in your brain. You need to tell someone else what you are doing to prevent you from procrastinating and to help you achieve your goals. I mean, we say it and say it and say it, y'all, but it doesn't become any less true. You can put them on a wall. You can tell people on social media. I know we were harsh on social media, but you can tell people there. You can tell your family and friends. Heck, you can shout it from the rooftop if you want, but you need to be sharing those goals and sharing those plans and sharing those visions with someone. Because then if inner Brandon, inner Meg, inner you decides that they're going to procrastinate on this, someone can hold them accountable to that and ask them about it not even in a bad way, just like, Hey, what's going on with this or that? And how good does it feel when someone does that? I know it feels great for me. It feels like one, someone cares and it feels like, okay, I am motivated to get this done because I want, I said I was, and I want to hold true to my word. So y'all look, I mean, we're coming into this new year. I know a lot of us want to really make a mark on 2021. 2020 was a loss for a lot of us, but guess what? 2021 is a new year and a fresh start if we look at it with fresh eyes in a fresh new way. And that might mean looking procrastination right in the face and telling it where to go. I hope y'all will try some of these things. I hope y'all will stay motivated. I hope if you set some resolutions that you haven't lost them yet, because statistically you might have. And if you did, forgive yourself, give yourself some grace, get back on that horse and get out there and get it, y'all. Hey B, what did you think of that episode? I think it was pretty dang good. Well, what should someone do if they enjoyed these last 30 minutes? They should probably head over and leave us a review so we can reach more people. They definitely should. Guys, if you like the Fools in Love podcast, please go follow us over on Instagram at Fools in Love podcast. We'd love to connect with you and learn more about what you'd like to hear.